features that were alien to the Aztecs, the Mayans, and all the other texts in that area. Completely alien features here at La Venta. And I like to shoot the profiles of them because a lot of times they like to just shoot them straight on so you can't see the prognathous jaw, the thick lips, and the noses, the characteristics, again, that you would anticipate amongst African people and African people in the diaspora. We move on, we can see here, as my wife sits here, you can see clearly her features in conjunctions of the features here. Again, a totally, look at the prognathous jaw here and the lips here, completely alien, completely alien to that of the Americans, the Native Americans here. Now look at the profile here. Look at this. Look at the jaw here. Now I take you to Kemet, to Hermachus. The only people in the world who are sculpting massive stone heads anywhere in the world other than this, and they're building pyramids. And uh, this particular one here, uh, one, one called a monkey, somebody called a monkey, so I shot this picture and I wanted to show you what they, what they said about this particular one in the, in, in the book as I read. Uh, this basalt pillar topped by, by a face staring towards the sky is one of the enigmas of the OMAC world. Again, uh, another enigma, a uh, puzzle or something, right? What is this creature apparently lost in contempla contemplation of the heavens? Is it a star worshiper or an astronomer? Is it a man or could it be an animal? Some specialists have suggested, in fact, that it is a monkey. <laughs> so I said, okay, let me take a picture of this thing here. I couldn't. And look at this. Look at the lips. And look at the ears. Look at the afro. No monkey has ever had an afro like this one. <laughs> you can even see the hairline. He looks like he has sideburns. <laughs> and his arms are in the position behind his head, showing that he's supporting his neck as he is looking into the heavens. Now what was a monkey do looking into the heavens like this? <laughs> so he's puzzled by this piece, enigma. Then right across the ocean where the currents are coming to this particular region, you find the very features in this land that they refuse to recognize even the possibility of these people coming across to America. Completely alien, completely foreign features. One time, a spark. So, Professor uh, J. M. Melger uh, wrote a paper here in Mexico in 1871. 1871 about the De La Cabeza, Colossal de Tipo Ethiopico, the Colossal Ethiopian stone face that he had, he had witnessed too. So I'm not going to leave you to uh, hang it. I'm going to put it all in English. And, 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 and as the scholars would say, in no uncertain terms. We're going to put it in no uncertain terms. On my arrival at the Hacienda, speaking as Mel, Melger, at, my, at the Hacienda, I asked the owner to take me to look at it. We went, and I was struck with surprise. As a work of art, it is, without exaggeration, a magnificent sculpture. But what astonished me uh, was the Ethiopic type represented. I reflected that there had undoubtedly been Negroes in this country and that this had been the first epoch of the world. Now here's an anthropologist back in 1871 who has come to this conclusion and has, has written papers on it. But this has been hidden from us. Matthew Sterling, they're just digging these things up all over the place in that area, all around the Gulf Coast. Standing there, all standing there in shock, looking at it. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> then he starts measuring it, looking at the nose, knowing it's nothing like his nose. Look at his nose. Look at his nose. And look at the nose on this. Look, look at his lips and look at the lips on this. Look at his cheek and his receding cheek. Here's a prognathous cheek. All of the dimensions that he's measuring clearly seeing that this is different. And his original position was that these were African, and when the scholarly world, the schools and universities, and then the supporting money got to him, he changed his story, Mr. Matthew Sterling. Yeah. Where can you get a face like that? What in Africa? In fact, they called his head Joe Lewis. 
when they saw it because Joe Lewis was a heavyweight champion at the time that this head was found. And so I put Joe Lewis here so you can see why they call that face Joe Lewis. <laughs> and Joe Lewis was wearing him a helmet too at that time. <laughs> digging them up in the swamps, walking around, tripping over and stumbling over them, finding them all over the place, the tinge on the lips, the nose, the jaw, the same continuous. All of them wearing war helmets. This particular site here called Kamakalko, which is also near La Venta, probably no, no more than 50 miles from that particular area but some 15 to 1700 years separate these two buildings. This is Maya. This is classic Maya. This is the only building that the Mayans built out of bricks in the entire land, which is a puzzle to me too. Just one day near the coast, the Mayans jumped up and built a brick pyramid and never built another one. And there's no history of it, of them having ever built one before. A, a fired brick. Not just some brick they let sun dry, but they fired the brick. You can see here, he's holding up the brick here, showing you what they built it out of, out of brick. And what's important also about this site, even though there's a period of time of maybe 15 to 1700 years to separate these two sites, La Venta and this site, it's continuous. The theme is continuous. The, uh, the urban planning, the structure, the architecture, all of it, the theme of the ceremonial center goes all the way back to that of the Olmec. You remember the two arms of the village that you saw in La Venta? They have the two arms here, the pyramid in the center, and they also had burials in this particular site. Again, dispelling the rumor, the rumor and the myth that these were only temples and not tombs. As you can see, the two arms of the village at Leventa, the basic theme prevailed. There are buildings underneath this, they haven't even dug it up yet. You can see them here. Here's the seven wonders of the world. Only wonder of the seven wonders you don't have to wonder about, right there in Kemet. The first monumental structure made by man, over almost 3,000 years BCE, 5,000 years ago, the light tower is gone, the hanging towers of Babel, gone, the statue of Rose, gone, all those wonders of the world, gone, the first wonder is still there. <laughs> So all the pyramids of the earth, if this hypothesis holds up, goes back to this particular pyramid, the pyramid designed by the multi-genius Imhotep for the pharaoh Zos in the third dynastic period in Egypt. Again, whether it's Teotihuacan, the step pyramid of Zoser, or the pyramid of superstructures even in India, which we haven't even got into, go back to this particular type, or this particular pyramid. The Great Pyramid of Khufu. As you see, they experiment with every type of pyramid. True pyramid. One looks like a gambrel roof. Square pyramids. And even had stellar stones around the pyramid, which is something that is really mind-blowing because you see the stellar stones here. Because a lot of the American pyramids also have stellar stones in front of them. All these ideas you see coming over here and we're not supposed to look at the parallels. We're not supposed to add these things up. And you can see again all the pyramids throughout Kemet and also Nubia, as you see these pyramids in Nubia, look at all those pyramids in the background. <laughs> Every one of them has a temple attached to the tomb. So we're talking about temple tomb complexes. We're not talking about just burials. Again, If you look carefully, this is not just a temple, it's a mortuary temple. And right next to this particular temple was a temple designed by Mentu Hotel, who preceded the Queen Hatshepsut. He was in the 11th dynasty. Hatshepsut was in the 18th dynasty who designed the other temple. So here you can see again the pyramidal superstructure in conjunction with the temple, again a temple tomb concept. Constant. So as I climbed these steps at Palenque, I had this in mind. The priest king Pakal here. And you can see here's a passage that you can walk right down the, the tomb here, inside the tomb, and down inside the temple buried like a pharaoh in Kemet was the priest king Pakal, just like the Great Pyramid. Here's a sarcophagus, Pakal. 
with, with inscriptions. They call this the temple of inscriptions. No one else in the world making Sakaka.